This is the biggest cyst that I've ever seen. This is the standing world record of Dr. Pimple Popper's biggest cyst ever. OK, this might get wet. I mean, if you blow a balloon up enough, it's going to pop. And so I'm just shocked that he has a cyst here that has blown up to this size, and the balloon hasn't popped. That's a cyst. Did you see that? All right, we're going to have to squeeze it. All right, you ready? I just want to see, because if I feel this is connected to any muscle underneath, I mean, we're going to have to just stitch you right back up here. I'm here with Steven, who has a very large lipoma on his back, and I'm not quite sure whether it is attached to the muscle at the base. And if it is, that's not something that I really want to mess with. All right. Still can't feel how connected it is underneath here. Let's see now. I can ease him out of here. She's going to feel me pushing and pulling on you. Nothing, again, should feel sharp. But let me know if anything is unusual to you. Makes a lot of noises. You know what I liken it to? It's a lot like um, the ketchup bottle when you can't get that first ketchup out because there's suction, you know, like if there's no air in there. Like Poma is noisy. You might be able to get this out whole. You okay? Mm-hmm. Just trying to stay awake. Oh, you, you can fall asleep. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you can totally fall asleep. If I get someone to snore in here, that's awesome. I'm really happy that this lipoma has this really nice pseudomembrane. It's really well encapsulated. But the deeper base of it is really bound down. And I'm worried it's, it's sort of like this octopus with all these arms. And where are these arms going? Like, where did these arms end? I don't know how long they are. And I don't know how deeply they spread. He's definitely planted his roots. A third of him out, and he's just looking at us, going, what are you trying to do? I can kind of tell like where the older lipoma is mm -hmm. because it's like a different color. It's yeah. like darker. Like it looks older. I think we see the old grandpa of this lipoma right now. The older part, it looks a little more gristled, a little more older and yellow. Um, I feel like that's where I'm coming to ground zero of the lipoma. Possibly the part that has been there the longest. Maybe it's the most attached to his body. Doing OK, Steven? You okay? What's up? You sleeping? Are you sleeping? Yeah, okay, I woke him up. Dang it. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, I'm glad you are. I was just making sure you're, you know, breathing. Pretty much all the sides are out, but he's pretty tangled. He's like at that edge where you're like, that fishing line. Do I just toss out the whole fishing line or do I try to untangle it? This lipoma is really frustrating because it is still stuck at a pretty wide base. And I can't see what's going on there because a lot of the lipoma that I've pulled out is now obscuring the vision here because it's really wide and spread out. The good news is the lipoma does not appear to be under the muscle. But it's sort of like I need to cut the head off of this octopus to be able to see where all the fingers are, are projecting. And I think he's got more than eight legs. It doesn't pull on you. It's your goal. Because I'm about to detach him now. Okay, why don't you carefully lift him into that tray? And then leave everything in there, because don't touch it, because it's not sterile right there. But it says here three pounds. Always felt heavier. Yeah? You got something fighting you back there? Yeah, he's fighting us. It's like when your jewelry gets tied. You're untangling it. example, yes. OK, we got it all. Yay, you should have told me you were a tough one. It turns out that it was very helpful that I cut the head off of this octopus so that I could see what was going on underneath. There is a lot of bleeding down deep at the base, and I have to be really meticulous about cauterizing any blood vessel that bleeds um, to help control bleeding. And pair this with some really strong sutures to keep this nice and tight. In case a hematoma forms, I don't want the stretching of that to rake open this area. So really firm stitches and good compression is really important. It looks good. You want to take a look? It's a little bit depressed there because there's numbing all around the outside. Oh, man. That looks good. 
I'm just relieved. I'm happy. Definitely a, a great feeling. Yeah, as Dr. Lee was working on me, I was feeling some tugging, but she made me comfortable enough to where I could actually just fall asleep. I mean, it was smooth sailing. She was awesome. It looks really flat. Now you can say it's like a shark bite or something. <laughs> OK, she's going to put a bandage on you. It's definitely a life-changing moment for me. Can't be any happier than I am right now. And now, I mean, I might just run around the block with just a uh, tank top on, man. This is the biggest cyst that I've ever seen. This is the standing world record of Dr. Pimple Popper's biggest cyst ever. OK, this might get wet. I mean, if you blow a balloon up enough, it's going to pop. And so I'm just shocked that he has a cyst here that has blown up to this size, and the balloon hasn't popped. That's a cyst. Did you see that? All right, we're going to have to squeeze it. All right, you ready? Get this cyst out of your system here. Oh, God. <laughs> That's like oatmeal. What is that face for? I'm just. <laughs> what were you doing with the cyst this big? I don't know. Walking around Who's with there? it. <laughs> I'm gonna look at oatmeal differently now. Huh? I never really liked oatmeal to begin with. <laughs> all this is is skin cells. This is all skin cells that are just shed. What does that mean, though? Like maybe you had an injury, maybe something hit this and traumatized it, and some of your skin got stuck underneath. OK. And it started to shed into the sac, and that's what all this is. It's just wet, dead skin cells that shed from you. You know how amazing it is that this never ruptured on you? That's truly amazing. Rowan has a cyst that has never popped. This is an area that's easily banged around. For something to get that size, I'm shocked that it never got disrupted, that it never popped. That sack must be made of steel. So, OK, see that? This is the cyst wall. If we don't get rid of this, yeah, it can be back. formed. Mm -hmm. It's all the way around, though, isn't it? It is all the way around. I just got a little morsel of it. This is where the hard part begins, because the sack wall could be stuck to the edges of his regular skin. And you have to remove the entire sack to prevent it from coming back. And the bigger the sack, the harder it is to remove it. We'll take little pieces at a time. I'm pulling. You feel a sensation of me pulling? OK, 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 OK. What does it feel like? Just burning? Burning, yeah. It's burning. Ronan's sack wall is really proving to be very stubborn. It's like pulling old wallpaper off the wall. You have to pull it off, and that can hurt. So I really need to use a lot more numbing. You're doing great. Let's see if you can bear with me. That hurt. Is it hurt here? Big time. I can't detach this part. That's the problem. This is the toughest cyst I think I've had. The cyst wall is particularly stubborn. It's like that silver skin on your tenderloin steak. It's something that you can pull off if you grab the whole thing, but you can't really tear it into pieces. Oh, ah, that hurt. OK, you're doing great. I feel so bad that I'm hoarding you. And we're good. You got it? We got it. It's over? Finally, you had a baby. It was literally like having a baby. That was the hardest one ever. You know why it sucked? Because I was hurting you. I'm sorry about that. Don't be sorry. I'm so happy that you did this. All that pressure is off my leg after all this time. I can't believe it. Wow. I spent years not trusting doctors, but I have the most admiration and respect for Dr. Lee. There was moments of pain, but the pain is well worth the result that I feel right now. We're putting stitches. I'm trying to make the scar as pretty as it can be. It was really satisfying to finally get Ronan's entire cyst out. And he's left with a pretty big scar. But I am so looking forward to seeing him at follow-up because it's going to look so much better. Look at this sexy knee coming back. I didn't recognize my leg when it was patched up from seeing how it was for so many years. It's amazing to see my, my leg for the first time. To be able to not have pain anymore, I can't even begin to describe how happy I am. I feel like I'm about to embark on a brand new life.
It's the new Ronin. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got here. What have you collected in here? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my gosh. It's a lipoma. It's official. It is an absolutely world record breaking lipoma for me. Now I still got to get it out of there. All right, maybe if I push it this way. I need to work out more. Lipomas can be easy, lipomas can be hard. Usually they're easy because they have a pseudo encapsulation which allows them to pop out really easily. And so Tim's, he does have a lipoma that is pseudo encapsulated. Problem is, is that it's just stuck and tethered down on the bottom and it's very hard to get to it because it's so big. <sighs> he wants to be stubborn. He does, it's probably like you. <laughs> That's going to happen. Do most of them come out in one I'm section? hoping. I really want to keep this in one piece because it's always really nice when something pops out whole. But can I pop this out of this small hole? I'm done. I wouldn't be surprised if this one broke the record for the biggest lipoma that I've ever removed. I think the last biggest one was maybe around 11, 11 and a half pounds. So let's see what happens here. It's right here. Oh my God. All right, I found your brain. Finally come out. It's literally a brain. <laughs> All right, let's go home. <laughs> I was finally able to remove this big melon-sized lipoma from Tim, but it's still attached by these little connections on the undersurface, so I'm gonna have to carefully, delicately snip those away. But at the same time, I'm also concerned about not dropping this thing. Hold on to it. It's gonna be a slippery sucker. Like a greased pig. <laughs> so it doesn't fall. Guess what? It's out of you. All right. Do you feel lighter? Mm-hmm. 33. You could lose so much blood in a matter of minutes. It would be nothing for him to be in cardiac arrest if someone were just to try to lock this up. You'd be no way you would stop that bleeding. I'm here with Roger at Dr. Osborne's Head and Neck Foundation. Dr. Osborne has just made his very first incision into Roger's rhinophyma, and bleeding is a major concern. So we've got a circumferential skin cut without too much blood loss. That's, that's nice. But I can already see a big vein right there. <laughs> Bipolar. 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 Dr. Osborne is using a bipolar electrocautery tool, which really allows you to seal the blood vessels as well as cut it at the same time. And sometimes there's some bleeding despite that because the blood vessels are so large. And that's why Dr. Hamilton's coming in with a little vacuum and pulling up that fluid because if there's too much fluid in the area, the cauteries don't work. So I have my finger inside the nostril just to delineate it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Last little piece now. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. There we go. Wow, they removed that entire huge piece with very little bleeding. So that is in itself a huge victory. Even if nothing else happens today, we've really improved Roger's breathing, removing that first big lump. But these doctors are just gearing up to tackle that second larger growth. There's tape placed over Roger's eyes, and this helps because he's under general anesthesia. Sometimes if you're laying back, maybe your eyes might open, and we want to protect his eyeballs, certainly. The biggest challenge here, I think you're just going to go straight across something, like I'm just going to lop it off. You're going to end up lopping off part of his normal nose. This is not just a take it off procedure. This is an unroofing of the nose beneath 
the mountain of tumor. And you've got to be careful not to remove the normal parts of the nose. It's, it's pretty easy to take something away. It takes an act of God to put it back. If I were to remove too much of this tissue, we could turn one deformity into another deformity. I mean, that looks like a... Portobello mushroom yep. coming off. You say portobello, I say potato. <laughs> There we go. It's just the skin could accommodate so much there. Dr. Osborne was able to successfully remove the superior tumor as well. Most importantly, he allowed there to be extra tissue there to really aid in proper reconstruction of the nose. All right. Well, we're not done, but no. the thing goes. <laughs> I know whose job it is now. You're gonna pass it on soon. We're able to get it off pretty well without uh, losing a lot of blood. But this is not really a nose under here. This is really just almost like hamburger meat. Dr. Osborne removing the bulk of these two gigantic masses on Roger's nose was really a feat in itself. However, there's still a lot of work to be done. Dr. Hamilton is a plastic surgeon who works really closely with Dr. Osborne at the Osborne Head and Neck Institute. He's one of the best plastic surgeons around, but reconstructing Roger's nose to become a fully functional nose may be his greatest challenge yet. It's been a long journey. The last time I saw Dr. Lee two months ago, my whole life has changed. It took a long time for my nose to heal, but now my nose looks great. And now that I have it fixed, I could do the normal things like eating, drinking, and sleeping. I could just sleep right and not getting no pains or nothing. And I could breathe, thank God. And I'm happy, I wanna just go out there in the street and show myself. I could go to parties and my family reunions. I, I missed out on, what, 10 to 12 years of that. And that's what I really missed.